Today I talk about the tight hip flexors test. The most famous hip flexor, the psoas. The second most famous hip flexor, according to many people, the rectus femoris. And the test that is commonly used to determine if the psoas is tight or not. And the problems with that test. Hello, I'm Paul Dijek, founder of Elastic Steel, method of athletic conditioning, easy flexibility, and Dijek stretching technique. So if you've never seen this test, and it's done by massage therapists, chiropractors, trainers, it looks like this. They place you on the table, and they ask you to slide down until the end of the table is under your knee. So now you're lying on your back, and you have the end of the table under your knee, and the lower part of your leg is hanging. Then they ask you to pull one knee into the chest. So now you have one knee pulled into the chest, the quadriceps is touching your chest. And then from there, they ask you to extend that leg that is hanging. That means that if you take your rectus femoris out of the game, then it has to be the psoas. If it's not rectus femoris, then it's the psoas. Well, there are 10 muscles that flex the hip. The four adductors and the six hip flexors. So out of 10 muscles, it's a little weird to assume that if it's not this one, it has to be this one. If there's 10 people in the room and somebody broke a vase and it's not John, it has to be James. What about the other eight people? The same thing with the hip flexors. In other words, we know that if we flex the knee, the rectus femoris gets stretched. And unless you have very flexible rectus femoris, you're going to have to pick that up somewhere else. So by flexing the knee, the hip is going to flex a little bit to give that space somewhere else. So let's assume you're doing that test. You're on your back, on the table. You extend that knee, and then your hamstring still doesn't come down to the table. Well, we know it's not rectus femoris. There's nine other muscles. Uh, how do we know that it's a psoas and not the other eight? Okay. I mean, it could be liacus. It could be tensor fossa lata, It could be pectineus. It could be sartorius. Why is it automatically psoas? Because psoas is a muscle that we all heard about, so it has to be psoas. The proper way to check is to go against the action of each muscle. So no muscle does the same thing. For example, um, sartorius, it will turn the leg out, it will flex the knee, it will flex the hip, it will abduct the hip, okay? Or tensor fossa lata, it also flexes the hip, but it's also abduct the hip and it's also internally rotates the hip. So without going to the specifics of each muscle, if you, for example, externally rotate the hip and the muscle is an internal rotator and the hip comes up, could be that muscle. If you internally rotate the hip and the muscle is a lateral rotator and the hip flexes, could be that muscle. The second issue is, let's say someone says, it's not rectus femoris, it must be the psoas. Okay. So people go into the lunge stretch and then they flex that knee. What are you doing? If you flex that knee, you know you're stretching the rectus femoris. You just did that on the table. And there's multiple YouTube videos on this. When people say one thing and then they do something else at the end of it, I'm not going to put those videos up and make people look bad. But if you flex that knee, that's your rectus femoris, right? Okay, so you want to take your rectus femoris out of the game if you assume the solace is a problem. You go into a lunge stretch, and then again you flex that knee. You know you are going to be stretching your rectus femoris. You're not even going to get to the psoas. Again, assuming the psoas is an issue, it may not be. There's 10 muscles there, remember that. So in any case, suppose you did the proper testing, and now you know what's preventing you from extending the hip. It doesn't have to be one muscle, by the way. It could be multiple. Okay, It could be one, it could be two, it could be three. For some people, it could be all 10. Now, when you do a standard lunge stretch, let's say you're not flexing that knee and you're not stretching your rectus femoris, you, your knee is almost extended. It can be completely extended because it's on the floor. Let's say you're doing it on the floor. But now you're in a lunge position and you bring your hips forward and down. The first muscle is going to get stretched is the tightest one. Okay. So if it's tight enough, whatever the tightest muscle might be, you're not going to get to the deeper muscles. Okay. So what you might do is you might overstretch that muscle that blocks and then eventually get a little bit to the muscles that are deeper that not as tight in that position but the overstretch muscle if you do that every time runs a chance of injury now imagine you applying the stretch to a skill and your skill may require you to have the knee flex and knee extended the hip turned out the hip turned in the hip abducted the hip adducted 
So you do something like that, and all of a sudden that muscle that was a little bit deeper, you didn't get a chance to stretch it, you need it for the skill, you need flexibility of that muscle for the skill, you don't have it. Why? Because you've been doing a standard stretch where everything is aligned, and in that standard stretch you've been hitting that first gate. And the muscle you might need for a skill may not be that first gate, it might be deeper. So the obvious question, how do you get to those deeper muscles? Well, you have to adjust against their position, against their line of pull. If they are medial rotators, you do lateral rotation. If they are abductors, you do adduction. If a muscle is, let's say, um, something like pectineus, it's an adductor and medial rotator, then you have to do abduction with extension and you have to do lateral rotation with extension. The same will apply to all the muscles of the hip, one by one. So I hope that helps. I'm Paul Dijek. Thank you for watching.